This training video is brought to you by K Alliance. K Alliance is the 21st century's educational corporation specializing in the most comprehensive enterprise training solutions, ranging from e learning to instructor led training. Press play for success. After watching this video, be sure to become a Facebook fan to receive the latest updates, promotions, and course releases. You can also subscribe to our YouTube channel to preview the latest desktop, soft skills, and IT training videos. Well, now that I'm at the computer, what I'd like to start with is a quick preview of the project environment. For those of you who have been in project before, but not in Project 2010, I think you'll see some wonderful new upgrades. And for those of you not here before, it's very much like other Microsoft environments. So what you know about other applications, try it here. There's a huge chance that what you've done in other applications will work in Project. I already have a project open, so let's go take a look at it. So this is a project that is simply from Microsoft. It's a template that Microsoft has available on its website and I opened it up just so we would have a project to work with. And I also changed the date in my computer and changed my project date to be May 12th, 2010. And the reason that I chose that date is that's the official release date of Microsoft Project 2010. So what I decided to do is have this project start the very first day the software was available and I know I didn't really create it, I borrowed it from Microsoft, so I just changed their dates. And we'll be learning how to do that as we progress with this training. For now, let's just look at what the project has happening on the screen. The first thing that I notice upon coming into the screen is that th these pound signs, they're a little bit annoying and they're in the way. So let's look at how to always, it always works this way, how to resize information in Microsoft. Whenever it's a column, you always go to the right side of a column. And on the right side of a column, you'll see the two-headed arrow. You can either double-click, because a double-click will take the longest entry and it'll auto automatically show the longest entry. Or, I'll go over here to the Finish column, you can simply click and drag. Whatever you prefer to do works just fine. And, and again, that works in all the Microsoft applications. So apply what you already know into project. So now I originally did not like the way those pound signs were looking, but now I'm pretty happy with the way that looks. So let's take a look at just the big picture of Microsoft Project. Here on the left, here on the left, it looks very much like Excel and it behaves very much like Excel. And this is often referred to as the project table. Sometimes people call it the project grid, uh, but it's very commonly referred to the table. And on the right side, what you have is the Gantt chart view. The Gantt chart view was not necessarily created by Mr. Gantt, but in the early 1900s, he's the one who popularized the Gantt chart. And the visual for people was often much easier to see than the written out numbers. And so the Gantt chart became a popular option for looking at projects. So that's what we have here on the right hand side. And we'll be spending a lot more time in the Gantt chart as we progress. But for now, I just wanted to look at the big picture. So anytime you're working inside a project or any application, right clicking is going to be a wonderful benefit for you. So anywhere that you might be working and you switch to a right click, you're going to get shortcut menus. I'm going to go over here to the table side and I'm in row three and I'm just choosing one of the empty cells here and right clicking. What you'll notice in project 2010 is there's a more robust shortcut menu. They've added many, many, many more features onto the shortcut menu. So often when you're trying to accomplish a task, all you need to do is right click and it'll take you to the specific task that you're looking for. So remember that option. All right, I'm just going to hit escape on my keyboard because escape erases whatever is currently visible that I don't want. Also, in the rows, when we're looking over here at the rows, we have the two-headed arrows as you go below a row, so you can always resize, just click and drag, or you can do that double click, whichever one you want to do. Again, it's personal preference. And you also have the little thick black arrows. So anytime you have a little thick black arrow and you click, when you click, it selects everything that you're pointing to. So anytime you have that little thick black arrow and you click on purpose or on accident, it's going to highlight that row, and now whatever you do will affect that row. So if I hit delete right now, that row would delete. So that's a quick look at the table section, and a quick look over here on the right 
at the Gantt chart, and again, the terminology involved. Before I leave the Gantt chart, though, there's also here across the top, there's the, the opportunity for the timeline that indicates for us what the timeline is set up as, and I'll show you later how you can change that. It's, it's not stuck this way. You can make changes in this area. Let's move to the top, though, and just identify that in Office 2010, they have the ribbon now in all of the applications. So even Project Now has the ribbon. And we'll have tabs, so whenever I would say go to the File tab or the Task tab or the Resource tab, when you do that, then it, it makes the ribbon visible for you. So if I ever say, we're going to go to the Project tab, when I click on the Project tab, now I'm using the tools on the Project ribbon. And then the last thing that I want to mention here is that based on what you're doing inside of your project, you may have an extra set of tools that pop up because project recognizes where you are and what you're doing. And if it does have additional tools, it will label. For instance, this one says I have some Gantt chart tools, and the tools that I have here are the format tools for working with my Gantt chart. But depending on the task at hand, that toolbar may actually disappear and just totally be gone, and or a different one may be taking its place. So it's, they're smart, they're very, very smart, and it's a new feature within projects, so you might find these to be different. They're not hard, they're just different to learn. Make them make the most sense possible, and I think that you'll find what you're looking for. So they're, they're conveniently organized for us, and you'll be able to find your tasks. So there's just a quick look at what the project environment looks like, and in the next lessons, we'll get on with learning how to use that environment.